Good day, folks. Welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to tan a mink. Uh, this video is going to show you how to do a mink specifically, but this will also work for any small animal that you trap, you know, mink, muskrat, weasel, squirrel, anything like that. Uh, it doesn't do the bigger, fattier animals. So stay tuned to an upcoming episode for uh, how to tan those bigger animals. But for now, this is all about the small animals. Uh, and in this, this particular video, I show you how to do a mink from start to finish. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, give us a like if you liked the video, and don't forget to turn on that bell so that you get notified when we upload new content. That's it, I guess, for now. So, without further ado, how to tan a mink with MB Wildman. All right, guys. Well, uh, first step in this process here, if we're going to go ahead and tan, uh, tan a mink, is that we need to flesh it really well. So, uh, I got a mink here that this was actually a roadkill uh, during season. Nice big buck mink. And... Uh, I just thought I would uh, make a nice wall hanger for my brother's camp. My brother's got a new camp he's building and uh, be a nice decoration. He's not done building the camp, and so I thought this would be a nice treat for him. But uh, anyway, so this, uh, this big mink uh, I picked up um, right near the end of season, so it was nice and prime, and uh, it was uh, a little squished, so the, skin, the skinning of it was a little hard, so there is a little... Not much damage, but there's a little, uh, a little blood up around the head, but I'll show you how to take care of all that too, so... Anyway, the, uh, the first step uh, in any process when it comes to tanning is you need to flesh this really well. So um, much cleaner than I would normally flesh it to go to market. Um, when I flesh a mink for market, the, uh, I leave the saddle right on and it just dries, right? Because you send, you send mink uh, fur side in. So, but in this case, if you take a look at it, you see I still have the saddle and all that, <clears throat> that flesh still on there. So it's, uh, this one would be good enough to go to market. Uh, but uh, it's not anywhere near clean enough to, uh, to start the tanning process. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take and go ahead and spend a few minutes and just really try to get uh, the, uh, any fat and meat and stuff that's left on the skin. I'm going to get that off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then uh, we'll show you the, the next step in the process. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, we're uh, pretty much done the first, uh, the first little bit here. We've taken the saddle all off and uh he's not perfect uh probably probably best that this one didn't go to sale anyway he had a few little uh few little marks on him where rocks off the off the road must have kind of kind of poked through um so a good one to do up a nice uh, soft tan uh for a wall hanger anyway uh so i've got the bulk of him fleshed now uh but he's not perfect yet so what i'm going to do now is uh, i'm going to take him over and put him in my uh in my fur drum and if you haven't seen that uh, video on the MB Wildman channel about drumming your fur at home uh, for a little extra money, uh, or a little more money for your fur, I guess, go ahead and check that out. There'll be a link right up here in the corner, uh, right about there, or wait, well, not maybe there, probably there. Um, there'll be a link uh, to, to that video. Go ahead and check that out. That's a good one. Uh, so I'm going to take him over and put him in my fur drum and give him a spin, and then I'll come back and I'll finish with the, uh, the flushing process. So here we are guys at my uh, super duper handy homemade uh, fur drumming slash, I don't know what you want to call it, machine. Um, anyway, makes the fur come out great. So go ahead and check that video out if you want to. We're gonna pop this, we're gonna pop this link in here. So I typically put everything in uh, skin side out and uh, I like to bury it up a little bit. We'll snap the lid back on that and we'll uh, we'll give her a spin. Okay, so we've uh, we've given him a spin. Uh, I did about five minutes with the flesh out and then I flipped him around and did five minutes or so uh, with the fur on the outside. So uh, what we've got is basically this. Um, so this is a mixture and you can check out the other video, but this is a mixture of corn grit and sawdust and uh, actually oil picker upper stuff that you put on the concrete floor. Uh, so you're just gonna take him out and give him a good shake. Try to get as much of the uh, that stuff off of the outside as possible. That really helps to soak up any blood or fat or whatever that you got on the outside of the outside of the pelt. Uh, and then I'm gonna turn him back so that he's uh, fur side out in, I guess, flesh side out. And this will soak up a lot of any excess um, moisture or fat that you have after you've went ahead and taken that saddle off and fleshed him for that first time. And so this is, this is kind of what you have. So uh, now he's not quite ready to, uh, to do the next step in the tanning process. I've still got to go ahead and, and I'm going to flesh all of this stuff off. So now that he's pretty much dry, 
uh, with the with the sawdust and the corn grit and that. I'll take them back to my fleshing beam and I'll go ahead and flesh all this stuff off and then I'll show you the end result and I can show you, uh, then I can tell you what the next step in the tanning process is. But once you get this done, take them back and uh, flesh them one more time to get them nice and clean. Okay guys, so we've uh, taken the time and we've uh, scraped them again, flushed them again after the, uh, after the spin and the corn grit and the uh, sawdust. And what you get is a much cleaner, drier pelt. Now it's still not perfect yet, but it's uh, ready to go on to the next stage. So this is, um, this is pretty much dry, not a lot of oil or grease on it, and it's uh, almost all flesh and, and, uh, and it's uh, fat and meat free. So uh, next step in the process is to salt the hide. And this is pretty basic. Uh, you just need to get some regular table salt and you're gonna salt all over uh, the fleshy side of the hide. You're gonna work it in with your thumbs. So you're gonna put some, put some salt on and work it, work it, work it, and you're gonna kinda wanna push it in and make sure it gets all around. Uh, the other thing that you need to make sure you've done and uh, that I'll mention is make sure you skin the cartilage out of the nose and the ears, uh, and also make sure that you split the tail, especially on uh, the smaller animals, the tail. Uh, you might think, well, I don't need to strip that, it's real small, but you'll trap liquid in there. Uh, and then it'll rot. So make sure you split open the tail all the way down to the bottom and make sure you work some salt into there as well. Uh, all I do uh, for that process is uh, I just take a container, just uh, an old Tupperware container or whatever you got, and open up some regular table salt. Uh, the brand doesn't matter, obviously. And I just pour in, I don't know, half a cup maybe or so of uh, table salt. And I just work right over uh, the bucket. Uh, I work right over the, the, the salt bucket here. I don't know if you can see this, not a very good angle, but, uh, and I just pick up some salt with my fingers, here with my gloves here, and I work it right into the flesh. So all you wanna do is make sure that you get lots and lots of salt. And I mean, the only reason I work over the bucket, of course, is just so I wanna be able to reuse it, and stuff that falls back in the bucket. Um, and by reuse, I don't mean take it and put it on my mashed potatoes. I mean reuse it to, to uh, salt the rest of this hide. So uh, that's all you do is you take and you rub the salt, as you can see. Uh, I'll try to give you a close-up look here. You just basically rub the salt into the entire hide. Make sure you get all around the ears and the eyes. What you will notice is that, uh, especially if you've used the corn grit like I just did a minute ago, you'll notice that the, the pelt was all kind of nice and dry. And as soon as you start to rub the salt in, it seems to get liquidy again, and it seems to get moist, and that's okay. <clears throat> that's the salt <clears throat> doing its thing by drawing out the moisture uh, of, you know, of the fat and the grease and, and everything else that's left in there. So um, you just want to do this to the whole hide, okay? So once you've finished the whole hide and you've got it all salted, um, you're going to want to roll it. Uh, so that the hide is next to the hide. So uh, just give me a minute, uh, I'll salt all this and then I'll, uh, I'll show you what I mean for the next step, just in a second. All right, so here we go, we've salted, uh, I've salted the mink hide and I've got it uh, all pretty much done up. Uh, lots of salt rubbed in and then, and then made sure there's lots of salt actually on the, on the flesh itself, on the hide itself. Uh, so the next step, all I'm gonna do is pull this out uh, and keeping it over the bucket, I'm gonna turn it so that it's fur side out don't worry about there being any salt on the on the fur of course that's gonna it's gonna wash it off in the end so what i do is i turn it so that it's flesh to flesh so basically back fur side out and then uh well i can do it here okay so then once it's that way i turn it upside down and i take uh some excess salt any extra salt that's left in the bottom of my bucket here and i pour it down in to uh, down into the pelt so that it's actually kind of flows out the nose and the mouth part just to make sure there's lots in there. Okay, uh, once that's done, after I've turned it, the thing I double check is the tail. I just double check to make sure that I've put salt all the way down where I split the tail. Uh, and in this case, I did all except the very bottom, so I'm glad I double checked it because that bottom part would have rotted if I hadn't done that. So just make sure we get salt all the way into the bottom all the way where you split the tail. 
Um, I use a tail splitter. Some people use a knife or whatever, it doesn't matter, just however you get it done uh, to split that tail. Okay, so now that there's salt there, uh, what I do is take the entire pelt, flesh to flesh, and just squeeze it. I don't want to squeeze out the salt, I just want to flatten it so that I make sure that the pelt is touching itself on the inside. And then I roll it, starting at the nose, and I roll it tight, as tight as I can kind of squeeze it here to roll it so that the pelt is pushing against itself in there with the salt, etc. Okay, when you get to the tail, just roll it up over top of the pelt. Try to, try to pinch the tail so that the salt is, is uh, flesh on flesh in the tail as well. Okay, there. Uh, once this part's done, and then I set my bucket aside, and this needs to set for 24 hours, okay? So the salt needs to kind of do its thing in here for 24 hours. Now, uh, I don't just leave it out. Uh, it'll tend to dry in the air a lot, so all I do is just get a, just get a bigger Ziploc bag, or any Ziploc bag, actually, um, and what you do is put your, put your pelt in the Ziploc bag, but don't seal it. Uh, just put it in the bag and almost seal it, if that makes sense. Zip it about halfway, um, but leave an air, air pocket, okay? And then uh, just set it, uh, again, away from people and pets, just so that they don't mess with it. But once it's done, like that, step one of your process is complete, or I guess, I don't know what step I'm on now, probably three, but uh, this is all you can do for right now, right? So this has to set for 24 hours. So we'll come back tomorrow uh, at, uh, what time is it now? I got quarter after six. So we'll come back tomorrow at around quarter after six and uh, we'll move on to the next step after this is, uh, after it's set for 24 hours.